It is not how much we do, but how much love we put in to the action that we do. Mother Teresa. And it's what we all do here. Madam President and fellow Toastmasters, why do we evaluate? What is the reason for it? Who likes being evaluated? Good, almost all the hands went up. <laughs> we evaluate here in Toastmasters to give and receive feedback. It is the feedback that we get from people outside ourselves that give a perspective that we have not yet seen, ideas that we have never even thought of. And from those we hope to learn to grow and that we hope to gain the encouragement to have the courage to get back up and do it again. Those are the primary functions of an evaluation. It is the reason that we actually get up and give these. Primarily, we want to improve and we want to get better. Everybody. So my question then is next. Who is the evaluation for? When you get up and give an evaluation, who is it for? And this is one I'm looking for an answer. The speaker. The speaker? And the whole the audience. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone. The evaluation is for everyone. Primarily, you're evaluating that speech but the information you're given is for everyone to hear. So that everyone else who has the idea of, I might want to talk about that, I might want to try that, or they're listening to this evaluation and go, that is something that I do and I might want to change or improve or try. The idea is that there is an audience. Specifically, you're going to help that speaker improve his speech, but you want everyone to learn from it. What is it that we evaluate? When you get a ready to do an evaluation. What are you looking for? What are you planning to focus on? There's a lot of possibilities, and you'll never do all of them in one evaluation. But amongst the things that you will do primarily, if the speaker has a set of goals that they have asked you to look for, that is above and beyond anything else than what you should focus on. It is what they're interested in. So if the speaker is working on their project, body language, but they want to hear your feedback on their vocal variety. Your primary focus will be on the vocal variety because you want to give them the feedback they want to learn and grow. And you give them information on their body language and on their structure and everything else that you can squeeze into two to three minutes that will be of use. The project has its goals. In the basic manual, it'll be a specific set of technical skills. In the advanced manual, it'll be focused on that particular project. There is no failure. If somebody gets up and they're supposed to be doing the communicating on television, which is actually what I want this to count for, and they get up there and they forget to even have a camera, and they're just sitting there giving a simple informational speech, it might have been more appropriate for the speaking to inform manual. Maybe it's more appropriate for just a simple project out of the competent communicator manual. But if they said that this counts for the talk show, now the communicating on TV, even if they did none of the project objectives, it counts. There's no denying credit. If they give the same speech over and over and over, never bother to bury it. They'll get credit each time they speak. If they do like one particular Toastmaster did years ago, and this comes from Ralph Smedley, who founded Toastmasters. There was one individual in one of the first clubs who had this very stilted speaking style, and he continually got evaluated on his very stilted, stiff, stuttering, almost speaking style. So he decided Finally, he'd had enough of it. He got up and gave a speech, and all he did for the whole speech was grunt. The whole thing. <laughs> that was the entire speech. <laughs> You'll still get credit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> yeah. I've had an individual give a speech, and 
the evaluator was flipping back through the manual trying to figure out, is it this one, is it this one? He was, she wasn't sure which one it was. And in the end, he really hadn't done either project's objectives. <laughs> but she gave the best speech she could. And in the evaluation, she said, you did not meet these objectives. These are the things you did well. These are the things you could improve on. You might consider going back and focusing on this project more particularly if you want to gain from it what it is hoping to teach you. He learned a lot, we all learned a lot, and he did come back and give that speech project with a different speech. When you're also focusing on, you're not sure which, even when you're doing one of the advanced manuals, you're going to be looking at the technical presentation that the speaker is giving. So you're going to want to look at the structure of their speech, you're going to want to look at their vocal variety, their body language, the words that they choose. All of those individual pieces that the competent communicator manual breaks into pieces, all of those projects apply in every speech. So as you're going through and listening and watching the person give the presentation, what you want to do is take notes of each of those things. Especially if something stands out, needing improvement or very well done, you take a note, write things down. Write down a lot of stuff while that person is presenting and speaking. There's also the aspect of, is the presenter making a connection? Is he getting an emotional rapport with the audience? Does he understand the audience? Is the audience understanding the presenter? There are many possible ways of doing that, and then you start suggesting possible improvements, or you did this particularly well. The aspects of how we make those connections. Those connections can be done through your pacing. They can be done through the stories that you tell or the characters that you create in your stories and the dialogue that they have back and forth. All of these things help create emotional connections, a rapport with each of the audience. The eye contact makes an important aspect as well. All of these things are things that you can write down, take note of, and make suggestions. If a speaker spends all his time talking about, he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that, he went there, he wanted to do this, he's talking always in pronouns, he's talking always in passive voice. That is a disconnect. Reconnect. Take out the passive voice and move into active voice. And then take the pronoun and give a name. Give the name a character. It's not he anymore, it's Charlie. Or maybe Chuck will be more familiar. That gives a little bit more of a connection and makes it more interesting. These are suggestions you can always think of and listen to. And if somebody has created a character, given an entire interesting personality we all want to engage in, then that's something you can say, you did that very well. Most particularly, what do you not evaluate? Person. The person, definitely not. The what content. else? The subject. The content, the content, yeah. The subject. I had a lovely experience one time. <laughs> One of the speakers that I was evaluating that evening got up and he was giving a speech essentially evangelizing. And I'm not religious. And I'm sitting there and I want to, by instinct, want to go, I want to refute everything you're saying. <laughs> but that's not my job. My job is to help you make a better speech. So I got up and in the presentation I have to explain, here is how you improve that speech. He had a great presentation style. He had a great way of making an emotional impact and very engaging. And honestly, I really didn't want more evangelists in the world, but my job was to make him get better at that. So I gave the feedback. Here are ways that you can take that to a further extreme. Start anchoring your emotional states you're generating within the audience to particular locations or particular gestures. These are ways to even further improve those speaking opportunities that you'll have. And then there is the alternative case, where a Toastmaster gave a speech, it was political in nature, and a particular politician she was praising. And the evaluator assigned completely disagreed and had the opposite viewpoint politically and spent the evaluation criticizing, essentially, the opinions that were presented never appropriate. It's a tough thing to do to get up and evaluate something you disagree with. 
but your job as the evaluator is to help that person improve. And if you get up and tear them down, you're going to lose that member. You're going to lose every guest. You're going to see all the new members disappear, and you are going to get an earful from the existing members. And that's not your job. Step back your opinions. Write them down if you wish. And if you want to rebut, give your own speech and have that person evaluate you. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't want to do when you're evaluating is you don't want to get up and give a speech where you said, you did everything great, and then sit down. A whitewash evaluation. We're here to grow and to improve. There's no such thing as a perfect speech. Somebody can get up and give an absolutely wonderful, engaging speech, and you can always find something. It may be hard, but you can. Always find a suggestion, because that's why the person's up here in the first place. On the other hand, as I pointed out, you don't want that chainsaw evaluation either, where somebody gets up and pretty much tears everything apart and gives you no encouragement whatsoever. That's what I say, the evaluation's for everybody. Your guests will join because they see value, and their value is going to come from the feedback we give. And if what they see is that the people getting up here are getting pilloried, the biggest fear in America is public speaking. And that fear is a derivative of public humiliation. People are afraid of being torn down in public. It's scary enough to get up here. What if somebody comes up and tears you apart? You'll lose all of them. So the encouragement is the key part. When it comes down to evaluating, you have several choices. You have the manual that was given to you by the speaker, presumably. They didn't remember the manual, right? And you can go through the questions. You'll write your answers. But you can, when you get up to speak, read a question, give an answer. It's a very simple and easy thing to do. But that's not the only way you have to go. You can decide to focus all on the technical or specifically on the technical, because your body language improve your structure. Or you want to give aspects of the emotional, how to improve the emotional connections and impact that they give. Create contrast, volume, or position, or attitude. But please, be specific. As an example, if you want to help somebody get better at their emotional connection and they're sitting there talking in their speech and talking about how excited they were, can you tell how excited I am? You want to make people feel it? Then say, how excited are you? Feel it. Be it. And show it in your evaluation. So if you're getting up and evaluating and saying you're excited about how good that speech was, you better be excited. Because the evaluation is a speech, and you want to show and demonstrate what you want everyone to learn. Now, what if you can find nothing? <laughs> if you can't find anything to suggest as encouragement, and this is tough, but it can happen, where you're sitting there and you're watching the speech, and it's somebody who's having a difficult time, and you're having a very difficult time trying to find what to say to encourage them to get back up. Choose little pieces of the technical. You don't have to say that they're over the top perfect by any means. Maybe they've improved in this fear, the particular aspect there. Or maybe you can just simply go out on, they had the courage to get up and do it, because how many people don't? But whatever you're doing, give that encouragement. Then there's the converse. What if somebody's giving a speech and you can't figure anything to suggest at all? And I've seen those speeches as well. Very polished speakers or somebody who's been working on that speech a very long time, and you don't know what to suggest. What do I say? They did everything perfect. They had perfect vocal variety of what they wanted to do. They had the perfect body language. They've done everything, made the connection, and everyone's crying or laughing on the floor. What if you decided that, let's take that speech. What would you do if you were to make it a motivational speech? What would you do if you wanted to take that speech and make it inspirational? Yeah. What if you wanted to turn it into a story for children? Twist it. You can always twist and then find a way to say, you might try that. And you might find that 
that one speech can go in a hundred different ways and tell a hundred different messages. Now, when I'm giving an evaluation, I am doing a lot of writing. I am writing down what the speaker is saying, especially the first sentence, so I can catch up the last sentence. When something sticks out, I'm writing it down. I'm drawing really very poor stick diagrams of their body language. I'm taking note of triads, specifically so I can tell them later when I'm giving the evaluation so I have specifics. If they say a word that sounded awkward, write that down. Think about what it might be so I can say, you said this, try this. The specifics are what's important so that they realize, and everyone realizes, you're listening and giving a specific feedback. Obviously, it's fun to say what are humorous moments. And when everything is done and I'm preparing the evaluation, I'm looking for three points to highlight that you did really well. And three points to, to highlight you might try to improve on. Then I arrange my structure. The most brilliant, best, positive point that I find goes last. It's so easy to get up and start with it with your evaluation because you're so excited about it. Save it. Make it last. Take the second one and make it first, and then fill everything else in between. Why do I say make it last? There are two reasons. The first one is for your own benefit, because when the red light comes on, and you realize there are other points I haven't said yet, throw them away, go to your finale, because you know what it is. But the second point, and this is the more important point, is because you want to end on the upbeat note. You want to end with the person feeling good and everyone feeling good. Better than when you started. So if you start with something that was the second best, and now you're giving little bits of stuff, and then you go up to something even better. They've gone up. That's where you want, is that upward trajectory, so that everyone's feeling good at the end, and that they feel like they can get up and do it again. Now, of course, delivery. You want to, I, I focus on the speaker, but I include the audience. I want to praise the speaker to everybody, but if I'm giving a suggestion, it's just simply to him. Larry will be evaluating in a moment. I focus on the presentation, and I try to imitate not just words, but also position, vocal variety, attitude as best I can, in parts like I'm creating the same environment, but also because when I change, it's an obvious, here's my suggestion. And why? But always end on the upbeat. Because we want everyone to feel like they've gained something. And if nothing else, we want them to be very happy to go back and start writing the next speech or even revising that same one so that they get up and give that evaluation and get more feedback again. What we'll be having shortly now is an actual speech, a typical five to seven minute speech for Toastmasters. I am going to be doing the evaluation, and I'm going to actually be back here talking to myself so that I'm recording actually the stuff that I'm doing at the time I'm doing it. Later, following that, Susanna will have her presentation, then I'll come back and finally give the actual evaluation presented, and then a recap of how I got to where it was. If you have any further questions after that, we'd be happy to get into more of it. But for now, my first part is done, Madam President.